Hello, my name is Mark Meyer, and this is the latest installment of Lifeline's Midweek Mentor. I am super excited to be with you here today because I want to share with you what I feel like the Lord has put in my heart. Uh, man, the last six months have been crazy. You all know it, right? You're feeling it. I mean, between the pandemic and all of the fallout from that and the riots and the looting and, and now the wildfires, man, it's enough to get even the most upbeat, strong person down, you know? And today I'd like to touch on how this has really affected the church community in particular. In February of this year, the American church was cruising along, right? We had our Sunday morning services on point. Our small groups were, were going. We had our outreaches. And then bam, we hit a brick wall. Church is closed. What? Is that even a thing? And since then, the local American church has struggled to get back together. It's like the flock has been scattered, but Jesus is now bringing us back together. I'd like to encourage you that no matter how you're feeling, you are still valuable to God. No matter your health situation or comfort level, God still has incredibly unique plans for your life. No matter your opinion on the effectiveness of face masks, you still play a very specific role in the kingdom of God and advancing the good news of Christ. But it may not have felt that way in the last six months. Now, I want to share with you a portion of scripture that God has highlighted for me that kind of addresses this topic or at least helps us to feel like the way we're feeling is normal. It's out of John chapter 21 verses 1 through 6. It says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, We'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. And it goes on that they brought in the net of fish. Jesus had a fire going. He has some fish already on the fire waiting for them. And it goes from there. <clears throat> now up until this point, since Jesus was re resurrected, he had appeared to his disciples two other times. So now this is the third time that he had visited them. But before Jesus arrives, we have this crew of confused Jesus followers who are unsure of what to do next. And all of a sudden, Peter says, I'm going fishing. Now, the abruptness of this statement implies that they've been waiting for a long time and that there was probably a certain level of disappointment there. Now, I don't know about you, but I can totally relate to this, just kind of feeling jumbled. You know, like just things aren't normal. And what do we do next? What do we do now? Now, we don't know exactly why Simon Peter said, let's go fishing. Um, some say that he was just going back to what was natural for him. He was a fisherman by trade, and he felt the sense of duty to go and provide for him and his family. And other people say that uh, by him going out fishing, it was very sentimental to him because that's what he was doing when Jesus first called him to become his disciple. But either way, when Jesus came, he gave them fresh encouragement and he gave them fresh direction for their lives. And they even found a hot meal. 
waiting for them. Now, I feel like the American church, you and I, are in a similar situation. We were dealt a heavy blow. We were told we couldn't go to church. We didn't really know what to do, and we're still trying to figure out how to be a community again and how to be effective in ministry. Jesus' flock has been scattered to a certain extent, and we've gone in different directions, I, I feel. But I believe that the church are now hearing his voice. The people of God are hearing his voice. We are hearing the shepherd's voice. And I want to encourage you today to do specifically what he's calling you to do. Now, we are all in different situations. And some of us can't yet safely attend church on Sunday mornings. And I totally respect that. I sympathize with that. And... Some of us now have extra time on our hands. You know, we've, there was a period of time where we weren't coming to church, and now we've, we have this extra time on our hands, and uh, instead of us doing that, spending that time in ministry or at church, we're now getting stuff done, or we're going places, okay? Now, I felt this way. I think most of us have. But I am confident when I say that Jesus has something for you. In the same way that he appeared to Peter and the others on that morning after they had caught nothing all night, Jesus wants to give you encouragement. He wants to give you fresh direction. And I think he wants to give you a new challenge. He wants to empower you freshly with his Holy Spirit. Do what he's calling you to do. It may be challenging, but true joy and contentment come when we obey the call of God on our lives. The troops were scattered, but now the Lord of Heaven's armies are calling us back together to be stronger and more focused than ever. I hope this blessed you. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you be with all of your people, near and far, and that you'd bless us and um, give us the encouragement to get back on track with what you've called us to do in our lives. We love you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, check us out on Sundays. We've got a great series going right now about the Holy Spirit. Don't miss it, all right? God bless you guys. <laughs>